Penguins has been the hottest in the NHL. The Pittsburgh Penguins are the hottest team. They've won nine straight games, and their head coach, Dan Bilesma, joins us now. Dan, thanks so much for being on the show. What do you like most about the way your team's been playing here lately? Well, I could point to uh, the fact that we've won a lot of different ways. Uh, we've come back in a couple games, but I think over the past uh, five or six, just the way we've played... Uh, Defensively, uh, our whole team, all five guys, our goaltenders have stepped up as well. But uh, uh, that's been a real strong point about the way we played the last uh, five and, and went overnight. I knew you as a coach would go right to that, you know, shutting it down defensively because I know you won a couple of those games. I remember the game in Montreal that you guys won seven and six. I think seven and six, and I thought you might need a couple of weeks off after that game. You looked like you were you were a little bit spent, but uh, you know. There is offense that comes with all these things. You guys have shut it down defensively, but how about how about Sidney Crosby? I want to ask you about him. You've been around him a while now, Dan. Is this the best he has played for you? Okay, I get this question an awful lot, and and I think every time uh, it's asked, I get flashes of uh, the replays that everyone plays and the and the goals he scores and some of the great great plays he makes. But I think. Uh, the consistency and the level he's played has been uh, remarkable. It's not just uh, you know the backhand pass in Toronto, but uh, maybe more for me. Said after that game that the defensive uh, assist he got in that game on uh, the game-winning goal was uh, was his best assist of the year. He broke up a play right in front of the Toronto net, and uh, it led to uh, us going back the other way on a rush. Pascal Dupuy getting the winning goal, and just the, the, his overall game, his consistency of which he plays it is has been the remarkable part for for me to watch and, and for us uh, having them on our team. Yeah, along those same lines, tell me about the dynamic of coaching these superstar players. Some people think you just throw Crosby or Malkin out there when he's healthy. You just throw them out there on the ice and anyone can be successful, but how do you get the most out of those players? But, you know, it's a... Uh it's a it's a great question. I think everyone thinks that uh, you know coaching Crosby or Malkin is uh, uh, completely different than, than coaching you know some of the other players or you know the players we don't talk about. But I think the thing the thing about both those guys and, and Sidney Crosby is uh, you know they're they're not a lot different than, than coaching other players. And you know Sid for right now I think uh, his focus uh, isn't on scoring points. It's not on being the best line or, or being a top the story and it's it's really uh, our team and our team game and I think that's something uh, that and coaching those guys uh, you have that in them and, and uh, certainly a big part of our success here so I, I don't think it's a, a magical honor you treat them differently but uh, certainly has been a big part of our team. Dan, how about handling your goaltenders this year? you got Thomas Fulcoon there, so it's a guy that has started and played a lot of games, and you guys have used him a bunch. You used him against the Bruins on Sunday, and uh, you've had Marc-Andre Fleury kind of spotted him a little bit more so far in this shortened season. How has that worked out for you this, this thus far? It's been an adjustment for, for me as a coach. I think, uh, you know, typically Marc-Andre Fleury, you circle the big games, you circle the, the, the big opponents, and that's where uh, your number one guy plays. But uh, this year, and, and particularly this season, with the, the shortened season, a lot of games stuck together. You, you know, we played three and four a number of times. Tomas has uh, played some big games for us. He's played twice in, in Madison Square Garden early on in the year against the Rangers. And, uh, you know, he's played some other big games, Philadelphia. Uh, and that's really been the case. We've uh, Tomas has uh, been able to play big games, and in this particular weekend, we wanted that Mark Andre hadn't played against the Rangers. You had to play against the Rangers, but a uh, big game against Boston, and with Tomas Volkun goes in, and you know, he played with the, the confidence and the ability of a number one guy uh, in a big game for us, and you know, real confident back there, real solid, and, and uh, in a game where in the last two periods we gave up uh, quite a few shots, and they were coming pretty hard. He stood tall. Dan, one really good story this season, the play of Paul Martin. How important has he been to the success of the team defensively? I, I think it's probably, uh, you know, there's not a lot of dramatic or, or flash about Paul's game, but his defensive play this year, and in, in particular being paired up with Brooks Orpik and playing a lot of major minutes against major guys, he has been uh, and quietly been, uh, you know, a big part of our team defense, a big part of shutting down other teams. And I think just the last game, uh, you see it. You see it in spades with uh, him playing 30 plus minutes. Uh, Chris Letang goes down with an injury in the last two periods, and I guess the big team against a tough team to play against, uh, he was probably at his best and a big part of that. And he certainly has been that uh, throughout the year for us.
Hey, Dan, uh, you mentioned Chris Letang. Give us an update on Letang and also uh, Guinea Malkin. What's the status of those guys? Uh, will we be seeing them again soon? Uh, it's Guinea, uh, it's... Uh, he's practiced again today, and uh, his practice level has been going up in terms of what he's been doing on the ice. And I think uh, he's making progress, and I think we'll see him back with the, you know, skating with the team sometime here shortly soon. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get him back here short order. He's obviously uh, a big part of our team, and we've been able to play some games without him. But we definitely want to see him back. And Chris Letang, I think, uh, you know, he's. Uh, Got stung in the game a little bit and, and couldn't play the rest of the game, but uh, he's responded well uh, today, and we'll see tomorrow about where Chris is at. But um, we're hoping that's not an injury that keeps him out uh, too long, if, if maybe even uh, getting back tomorrow. Well, we had a lot of questions from Penguin fans on Twitter. A lot of them were asking about those two players that you just addressed. But another one here, Carl Bridgewood says, despite the nine wins in a row, are there any areas you still want to improve upon? Well, we're coaches, so we uh, <laughs> you know, we like winning nine in a row. We know that we've had some some really big games. Uh, you know, we've come back. Uh, I think really playing well defensively has been a focus for us uh, this whole year. But uh, in particularly, we've been doing a great job of that. And that's not just really our defense; it's our team how we play with the puck and the responsibility of our, our our five guys on the ice. And we've done a good job with that. I think that's something we need to keep keep focused on, keep getting better at uh, our penalty kill has taken a few lumps uh, at times during the season. The number's not great right now, but an area we want to continue to get better at and um, know we need to get better at as we, we head down the stretch here. So those two areas, but I think as a team, we want to keep going and keep getting better. That's been our focus for a while now, and we know we need to continue to keep getting better in some of those areas, but I like the way our team's played. We want some crazy games. 6-5, you mentioned the, the the, the game in Montreal. We've also won a big game against Boston here coming back and scoring three goals late against a very good team. So uh, we like a, a lot about our team right now, but we got to keep keep getting better in those areas, and that's our focus. Hey, Dan, you know, you, we talk about, you know, the nine-game winning streak, which is, which is great, and you guys are rolling right now, but I'm sure you and a lot of the guys probably in that room remember what happened last year. You guys were rolling through February and March last year, and you got derailed. So I would imagine that that weighs into your thinking, too, in terms of wanting to kind of just push forward and, and continue to keep it going and not have any, anything get you sidetracked again. Well, the, you know, last, last year you spoke about, uh, you know, the last 15 games or so and leading into the playoffs. And uh, one of the things that our team has, uh, you know, really been focused on this year is having a different mentality when it comes to playing and playing games. And uh, I'm not sure we were at our, our team best and our team identity last year. Uh, even, uh, you know, in those last 15, 20 games we played. And uh, this year uh, we're looking at a different mindset and different focus. And that's something we're going to keep having to build on and, and keep getting better at, uh, regardless of where we're at, regardless of the number of wins we've had in a row. And, and uh, we have 18 games left uh, to keep getting better at that. All right, Dan, very last thing here. Tonight after the show, EJ and I are skating together for the very first time <laughs> in New Jersey. You and I skated quite a bit together, unfortunately for you, with our pickup games. Do you have any advice for EJ on how to deal with me? Is, is uh, EJ playing with you or against you? I'm with, I'm with him. Okay, don't don't uh, call for the puck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not in uh, Mirzi's game. It's not coming to you. It's not coming to me anyway, probably. Yeah, but uh, he is a sneaky sneaky goal scorer on the case. So if you can okay. uh, allow him to get open. Uh, get him the puck. He does have the ability and a unique way to finish. So <laughs> finish what? I like the way you said in a unique way. Yeah. That tells me that's not quite what we're, we're thinking about here. Might not be conventional. Okay. But uh, he does. You know, he had quite a few game-winning goals. So if you can, if he does make enough room for him, he's, uh, he can find the back of the net. All right. Wow, that question went a lot better than I would have ever imagined. <laughs> Thank you. I like to collect the garbage, Dan. Thank you very much for that and for joining us. Uh, absolutely, Miss Miss Mirzi, we miss you. Very nice. Uh, oh, well, I, nice. I appreciate oh, that. Nice to Dan. They missed you. Uh, great guy. We're glad to have you though. The greatest. Up next.